here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for attending tonight uh, the uh, special council meeting. Apologies for being a little bit late, but uh, some just some small technical issues. Uh, I'd just like to remind members of the uh, council, staff, and gallery to turn your mobile phones off or onto silent, please. Ensure that that occurs. Uh, as this is a uh, special council meeting, there will be no questions tonight. Uh, we do have some submissions later in the evening for the other special council meeting in relation to the budget. And uh, it will be a little bit disjointed because between the two special council meetings we have a confidential uh, report to uh, consider and during that report I will ask the uh, members of the gallery to leave the chamber while we consider that report. Uh, it could take, I'll just pre-warn you, it could take um, uh, some time, perhaps up to half an hour for us to consider that, um, but uh, be assured that we'll call you back into the chamber once we're uh, ready to continue with the uh, second part of the meeting. Thank you. Call on uh, Dave Barry, please. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All council meetings are filmed with both video and audio being recorded. Uh, while video is focused on this area up here where we're sitting, from Councillor Roper through to Heather Green, um, audio from the entire room is recorded. So by speaking at any time, you consent to your voice and any comments you make being recorded. The entire recording is currently being streamed live on YouTube and is also available on YouTube, on Council's YouTube channel uh, directly after this meeting. The reason for doing this, of course, is to improve transparency to all our ratepayers, something we seek to do. And um, we have a, on average about 70 or 80 ratepayers looking at every single Council meeting. So wherever we can increase transparency at minimal cost, we seek to do that. Um, and that's why we broadcast these meetings. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, acknowledgement of traditional custodians, recognition of all people, and an opening prayer. Could all please stand. The Alpine Shire Council acknowledges the traditional owners of the land we are now on. We also acknowledge those people who have contributed to the rich fabric of our community and strive to make wise decisions that will improve the quality of life for all. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Apologies uh, this evening, um, Councillor Forsyth and Councillor Pierce. Declarations uh, by councillors of conflict of interest. Neil? Yeah. Item 5.1.1, Councillor Code of Conduct, uh, Chief Executive Officer, Mr Barry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The recent amendments to the Local Government Act compel Council to hold a single meeting that is dedicated entirely to consideration of the Councillor Code of Conduct. One of the main reasons for this increased focus on Code of Conduct has been the number of Councils that have had to have administrators or commissioners appointed in recent years. And the underpinning logic behind the changes to this legislation is the Minister seeks to constantly give councillors and council more tools to deal with um, individual councillors who don't conduct themselves accordingly. So historically the only tool available to the Minister was to dismiss the entire council and to take action against the entire council bit by bit and there are changes in legislation to avoid this circumstance. So the Code of Conduct is largely the same as the previous Councillor Code of Conduct, except you will note for um, one section that has been changed substantively, and that is the, dis the issue resolution process under section 15 of the Code of Conduct. And the major change there is it actually gives Council better capacity to deal with breaches of the Code of Conduct. So historically, council, when a councillor broke the code of conduct, had to refer that councillor on to VCAT or a higher authority. With these recent changes, 
council will be able to appoint an independent arbiter, um, which will have lower costs for ratepayers, and that arbiter will then make a recommendation to council. Council will consider that recommendation and may choose to cause anyone who has breached the code of conduct to take leave for two council meetings, may cause them to make an apology, um, and may cause them to take other actions. So, in short, um, the report says that the code of conduct needs to be adopted prior to the 4th of July, and the changes are minimal other than a, a, a significant strengthening of that section 15 of the code of conduct. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I know I've gone on a bit, but it's, uh, I'm conscious that we've probably got a bit of time to pad with this particular, uh, <laughs> particular meeting. I so move. I second. Gentle. But I will move um, that, um, sorry, that we adopt the Council Code of Conduct version 4 as attached and signed and sealed the document at the appropriate time in this meeting with the proviso that we delete 7.1, uh, the last dot point, which I will read out. Um, the last dot point says that bear in mind that post-decision dissent weakens the Council in the eyes of the community and therefore will only express dissent if they are of the opinion that their accountability to constituents requires them to, and this action is taken carefully and with respect. The previous dot point says, accept the collective decision of council once it is made and ensure that they do not undermine or publicly denigrate the decision. Therefore, I believe that um, the last dot point is uh, invalid because we, we make a decision as a council and every councillor must abide by that decision. They cannot go out in the community and tell everyone that, oh, I didn't vote for that, so I don't agree with it. That is absolutely wrong. Um, so I'd like to put that into the motion. There is also another one, which I'll get uh, Councillor Keeble to read out, which we'd like to add as well, or delete. Delete as well, so thanks. Um, Councillor Vonnex, number three uh, is to delete in 9.2 on page 17 of 35, under telephones and mobile equipment, the last paragraph and last sentence, um, as I believe they refer to the mobile phone policies and use of computer and email and internet policy. The first paragraph outlines it fine, the other two are relevant. Would you like me to read those out? Yes, please. So on 9.2 under telephones and mobile equipment, um, what we're asking to strike out is councillors will be provided with details of mobile phone usage and are required to declare that costs incurred relate to council business except for incidental personal use. Councillors will reimburse council for personal use exceeding incidental use. Um, the paragraph that precedes that says councillors will use council provided telephones and other mobile communication and computer equipment in accordance with the relevant council policies and procedures. The um, following sentences are what's actually in the relevant council policies and procedures already. So I'm not saying we're not doing that, but it doesn't need to be in there because it's already inferred there with that first sentence. We thought that that was a fairly grey in regards to use of exceeding incidental use. There's more information in the policy around that. Thank you, Councillor uh, Farrell. Um, I'd just like to get clarification that we all need to sign this. Is there a date that we need to sign this by, uh, Trevor? Do we need to sign this on or fourth or when? I, th I think the aim would be to sign this by the fourth of July for all councillors, and there's a signing uh, clause for all councillors. Thank you. Can I ask if Councillor Farrell agrees with those additions to the motion? Ah, yes, indeed. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> um, uh, three, Mr. Mayor, just expanding on Mr. Britton's comment there. Um, I will look at the legislation and uh, get back to Councillor Farrell, but my understanding is that under Section 28 of the Act, um, you need to sign the Code of Conduct to be qualified to be a councillor. Um, so we will seek to have every councillor sign it by the 4th of July, but if they don't, it is only as my understanding is if you refuse to sign it, is that that's the time at which you become disqualified. But I'll, Thank you. I'll confirm that to you. Um, could I sign it tonight, please? Or we're going to wait until next week? Yeah, I, think, I think we need to have that document probably prepared with those amendments. Uh, 
Councillor Farrell. Thanks. I don't think that will be able to be done tonight. We'll take it to the vote. All those. Can I, my apologies, yes, uh, Councillor Barnes. Okay, just talking about the code of conduct. Um, it's still not strong enough as far as I'm concerned. Um, I did have meetings last year with um, the Minister for Local Government, and all councils have problems with council laws. And um, I don't think we've gone far enough. I think it needs to be a lot tighter. Um, and the penalties need to be a lot tighter as well. We're here to re represent the, the public and um, governance, and I just sometimes don't think we do that properly. Um, but that's just where I come. I think I'll be working in the background to try and get it even stronger in, in the next four years. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Any further comment? Mr. Mr. Mayor, I can just clarify that particular item. Um, so every councillor upon election needs to take an oath of office and sign the councillor code of conduct. So if you don't do that, you cannot become a councillor. So the signing process will apply to new councillors, but if existing councillors refuse to sign, um, that uh, won't have an impact on their status as a councillor. Thank you, Mr. Barry. We can take this to the vote. Now, I think if there's no further comment, uh, all those in favour of the uh, recommendation with the amendments? Carry. special council meeting for uh, this section, meeting six, um, and that is at uh, 5.20 by my watch. Uh, we will now go into the uh, confidential report and uh, at, at this point... Uh, no, sir, we'll, we'll, no, we'll commence the next council meeting at 5.30, the next special council meeting at 5.30 and there's a confidential report that's part of that. Mm, okay. Being corrected there. Uh, Dave, yes, thanks, Dave. 515. Okay. So, Mr. Mayor, we can go into the next, we close this council meeting, we can now go into the next council meeting, and as part of the next council meeting, there is a confidential item. Yes. Yes.